Helix scoliosis begins in your mind. Feeling safe is the first step forward. Hi, in my previous video, I mentioned how the fascia, the largest sensory organ, reacts to any perception of threat or unsafety. It tightens and armors up in self-protection. Less than ideal childhood circumstances keep our brain in a state of constant hypervigilance. This doesn't allow our nervous system to relax. Losing my mother and not having another dependable parent figure made me feel very unsafe. I had to deal with an extremely violent father who was quick to fly into a violent rage. I feared for my life. Then there was sexual abuse. Becoming a woman was dangerous. In addition to these traumas was the burden of parentification. There was no time to grieve and gather my bits together. I was supposed to put on my big woman boots and become the woman of the house. Like my mother's death magically turned me into an adult at 11 years. My father expected me to take on my mother's role. Any mistake I made resulted in him attacking me. My extended family weren't interested in helping a motherless way. I was an unwanted burden to be used when it suited them. Daily life was such, such a struggle just trying to survive. On top of all this, I was supposed to maintain my grades. I survived by completely blocking out any feeling and emotions. Anything I felt was suppressed, but I was seething and raging inside. I was frightened, alone, unsure, desperate for some form of help and connection. But I didn't get what I needed at a deep emotional level. Now many will say that I wasn't abused or neglected or parentified. I had a perfectly happy childhood. Well, many of us who develop scoliosis have a personality type or rather develop a trauma personality of suppressing our true feelings because we didn't feel safe expressing how we felt. Circumstances trained us not to express our needs and keep a lid on our true feelings. No one being there, invalidating, uncaring, busy or stressed caregivers, perfectionists or high expectation parents subconsciously make us feel unsafe. Bullying or being ostracized from your peer group also deeply affects our sense of safety. I had a dying mother. I learned that I have to be the sane and responsible one or else my mother would suffer. It became my default setting. Most of our patterns of thinking, feeling, reacting are programmed into our subconscious in our childhood. We behave according to these encoded programs. As dependent children, any inkling of our parental anger, rejection, withdrawal of love and approval sends our underdeveloped nervous system into panic mode. We need our caregivers to survive. We will do anything to stay in their good graces. We learn to hide our true feelings, conform, people please, just not to be rejected and kicked out of the fold. We develop a false self of being compliant, making ourselves unobtrusive, not saying anything to upset the adults. This helps us survive in an adverse or less than ideal environment. But the incongruence of who we are and what we have to become to survive puts a cognitive load of pretending on our mind-body system. The famous writer Boris Pasternak has this to say on pretending. Your health is bound to be affected if day after day you say the opposite of what you feel, you grovel before what you dislike and rejoice at what brings you nothing but misfortune. Our nervous system isn't just a fiction, it's part of our physical body, and our soul exists in space and is inside us, like teeth in our mouth. It can't be forever violated with impunity. Our body or mind will break down at its weakest link. Everyone is different. So stress affects each one of us differently. Some develop stomach issues while another will develop back problems. The first step in healing is to subdue our brain's regular habit of being on threat detection mode to a state of calm. So how does one stop feeling unsafe? There isn't just one easy and quick strategy. What works for one person may not work for another. Each one of us has to find our own magic button. One thing I'm certain though is you cannot really get healthy being in the same environment 
and around the same uncaring people that made you sick? If you can't leave initially, you have to find ways to instill feelings of calm and safety. Little moments at a time is the only way to begin to take our power back. No, don't try to fight back when you are still dependent financially and emotionally. Explore, experiment and be open to different ways to build feelings of safety within. For me, listening to healing music and guided meditations was the start of creating little oases of calm and peacefulness in my nervous system. That was nearly 10 years ago when I was still working a high stress job. Even though I had listened to healing music a few times, I didn't feel any effect. Then, serendipitously, I listened to Dr. Jeffrey Thompson's Brainwave Soup. It had alpha theta waves. I woke up from the light hypnosis it induced, feeling soothing and centered. Those racing angry thoughts seemed to have disappeared. For the first time in years, in my late 40s, I experienced my brain feeling peaceful. It was the beginning of me seriously deciding to pursue healing my traumatized brain. I thought I'll try to heal my mind at least. Forget scoliosis. However, healing my mind, the grief, the sadness, the pain, the rage, the rejection, the shame and the hopelessness. All those difficult emotions that I had suppressed to survive was what was needed to relax my tight rigid fascia. Once I was no longer suppressing my emotions, my fascia relaxed its grip of protection, allowing space for my spine to come more and more into alignment. If we want to heal, we have to garner our inner strength and courage to override our painful circumstances. We all have some degree of power to move out of the state of helplessness and find ways to build islands of comfort within us. Listen to music, sing, dance, go for a walk, exercise, do some EFT tapping, read an uplifting book, watch a good movie or TV series. Go for a massage, visit your hairdresser, talk to a therapist or friend. I found online support groups nurturing and helpful too. Every day, building small pools of safety can eventually lead to an expansive sea of calm regulation. Only when our nervous system gets the signal of I am safe, will it slowly begin to release its self-protective armor of scoliosis. To heal scoliosis, we have to feel safe. Check out my fermented beetroot drink. 